Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props and today I'm gonna to be doing a little review of this Fix Dry NT1 filament dryer. I've been using it now for a couple weeks and I am finding it pretty handy. So I do a lot of reviews on printers, if you've looked at the channel at all. If not, take a look, subscribe, hit that like bell. Uh, but today I wanna to talk about something, uh, some things that you sort of use behind the scenes of the printer, that it's not you know, related to the printer, it's related to the second most important part of 3D printing, right, is the, the medium, the filament. And my workshop is in my basement, so sometimes in the winter, it's very, very dry because the air is very, very dry. And sometimes in the summer, it's still cool, but it can get a little humid. And I try to keep the filament in the bags and whatnot before I use it. But if you don't use all of it, like I haven't for these two right here, then they sort of sit out and they can become brittle. Or if you're using something like a, a TPU, or a pet G, they can absorb that moisture and can give you those bloops and blips and that poppy noise when you're printing and get a lot of stringing and garbage like that that you don't really want. So that's when you use a filament dryer. Now I've got a few filament dryers and this one, uh, Fix Dry was nice enough to send me, that I really am kind of digging for a couple reasons. Um, Let's take a look at this unit first off. So it is a nice small design. Uh, it fits really easily between a couple printers and that is great because space is always challenging in any kind of small shop. The other thing I really like about this is it holds two spools. Okay, so you can uh, pop this guy open and you can put a spool here, and you can put one here, okay? That's great. So you're, say you're running two different prints, and you're trying to keep those printers cooking away, maybe it's for a business or whatnot, or you're just trying to get a big cosplay ready. You can have two of these things in here, and it will just keep them dry, keep the humidity out, and make them the best possible filament that you can have running through your machine. So that's great. The other thing I like about it is the case top. So you can put your filament in here and just dry it and then take it out and put it on your printer like you usually would, or you can leave it in here so it's continually being um, dried and being processed so that it's, again, the best filament it can be going through your printer. And on the shroud here, on the case cover, you've got multiple areas where the filament can come out. So it can come out the back, there's two here, there's two here, there's three on the top, three in the back of the top, and that is fantastic because, you know, I've got some things where uh, the printers are over on this side, some when they're over on that side. And this way I can sort of just decide where I want the filament to come out of. And that is really handy. Not a lot of plate people, not a lot of dryers have this type of uh, versatility in where the filament comes out. So I really like that. Another thing I like is you've got a series of holes up top here to help get rid of the humidity. On some filament dryers, sometimes you can actually see some condensation, some beading, some humidity coming up. This, uh, actually I haven't seen any of that with this, so it definitely helps, might, must help the humidity escape, because again, I have not seen any. So I like that aspect of it. I'm just gonna set this down over here. The other thing I like about it is it's pretty bare bones. Uh, there are not a lot of buttons on this. You've got a power button, you've got your temperature, your humidity, and your time. That's it. You can set the up and down and you're done. So there's not a lot of settings. And if I go ahead and put the case cover on, and it can go on either way because of just how the holes are set up. I'm gonna use my um, sound level meter. So it's coming in at, other than when I talk, it's coming in at 59 decibels. And it is very quiet, it is very quiet. I could definitely see where the sound would be dwarfed by a printer or it would just show up as white noise, which I like anyway when I'm in the shop. So 
it's totally fine. And I've got to say, there isn't a lot I haven't really dug about this unit. I'm going to say a couple different things. Of course, one isn't a takeoff on the machine. It's just how things are. Obviously, you have to have two of the like filaments in here. This isn't any knock on the machine. It's just a fact. You have to have two PLAs, two pet Gs, whatever, because it isn't like it's dual control, right? There's no divider down the middle. So if it's got to be 50 degrees for four hours for PLA, if it's got to be X amount of degrees, you've got to have the same filaments in here. Now, again, the printer's pretty bare bones. It doesn't come with much, but it does come with uh, some extra tubing in case you want to use that to, to feed through here. It does come with this shroud. And this is important because this has to go in here over sort of the heating element and the fan when you're just drying it. So let's say you're gonna just dry it for four hours and take it out. You use this shroud. If you're gonna be running prints and the filament stays in here, you can have that out. I'm assuming it's if you had it just sitting here and it's close to this heating and drying element, it could uh, you know, warp the actual filament. But since it's constantly moving, it doesn't have time to do that. So if you are just gonna let it dry and you're not using it for printing, make sure you put that shroud on. And those are the only two things that really come with it because it's really all it needs, other than of course it comes with the instruction manual. Now I can really only come up with two things that I'd like to see uh, fixed with this filament dryer. One is, yes, I talked about how simple it is, and that's fantastic. But the only problem is I can't remember, and I choose not to remember, how long and at what temperature different filaments need to dry by. It is in the instructions. So if you look in the instructions, you can see that PLA is you know 50 degrees, four hours TPU. It's right there. So I probably will keep this, maybe cut this page out and just sort of have it lying next to the printer or tape it to the side or something like that. Whereas some of your filament dryers, like, like let's say the Sun Loom one, that has presets. And that wouldn't be too bad, just to add some presets in here for people that just don't remember all the different settings, because uh, I never do. But other than that, you know, how simple it is, that's fantastic. And actually, it might help me even remember these things. Now, the other thing is, is kind of weird and it's kind of minor. When you put the lid on, it has, um, it, it softly goes on there and there's some weather stripping must be around there to make sure that, you know, no heat escapes and no air gets in. Uh, the problem is when you try to take it off to say maybe add more filament on, it, it you know, you, <laughs> you kind of have to make sure you're holding on to the base and then maybe push it up with your thumbs. Really, really silly, really minor. Uh, I don't know how they could fix that. Uh, you don't want this base to weigh a ton. Uh, it does have a nice weight to it, so you can see it's not gonna go flipping around. There's rubber feet on the bottom. I don't know what else they could do. So, you know, I guess I'm just gonna call that as me being a baby and just say, oh, I gotta do this. How tough could that be? Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything you could do to fix that, but either way, that's something that's a little bit of a pain, but it's so minor you wouldn't even notice it after you do it a half a dozen times. Uh, I had to write it down to remember to talk about because I haven't thought about it since I first used it. So should you get a filament dryer? Yes, definitely, especially if you live in humid areas or really dry areas, or if you have your filament laying out like this a lot, uh, this could solve a lot of the problems you're having. It was like day and night when I started using filament dryers. Uh, I was talking to somebody, it might have been uh, Uncle Jesse, and it was just like, no, you should use a filament dryer. I can't remember who it was, I'm thinking it was him. Um, and this thing has definitely made it so my prints come out cleaner, and, that, and my other filament dryers uh, come out cleaner, and uh, I get less stringing, less blobbing, and really works out really, really well. Um, if you're interested in picking one of these out, check it out. Link is below to their website. This, uh, you know, they did give me this, but I get nothing to do these reviews as far as uh, they don't say, you know, you've got to show me the video. You, I'm going to pay you money for a review. My reviews are, uh, you know, my own. And um, 
If I had th more things to be critical about, I would be. <laughs> so there you go. All right, guys, if, again, interested, check out links below. Also, a filament I usually use is either Sunlu or Zealtech. There are links below for that. They are affiliate links. If you click on those, I will get a little bit of something to buy more filament and toys like this. Audio. I love having this now. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. Take it easy, and I will see you in the next video.